Good morning, New Life family. We're so glad you joined us. We're excited to be meeting with you in your living room, kitchen, car, or wherever you are. This morning, we want to encourage you to make the space you are in church. Cast the stream on your largest screen, gather the family, get up, dance like no one's looking, because they're not, raise your hands, sing loud, and pray with us, and let's have church. We have an incredible worship experience planned for you. We're going to sing, hear a message from Pastor Todd, and respond. But before we get started, I would love for you to take a second and share this broadcast on your feed. Then drop a comment in the chat and tell us where you're watching from. Or say hi. Our service host can't wait to greet you. And don't forget about those emojis. We love to see the praise hands. If this is the first time that you have joined us for church, we would love to welcome you to the family. If you'd like to get connected with us, grab your phone and text the word NEW NLC to 97000. Now let's worship together.
This morning, God, we just put our trust and our hope in you, Jesus.
Victim may be fought, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle.
I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you. One more time. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to the
incredible morning of worship. I don't know if you just realize this or not, but we just sang some incredible truths. We sang about God's freedom. We sang about his love. We sang about that we can trust him and there's victory in him. And finally, we just sang about this great hope that you and I have. And I'll tell you what today, that I think in this time, God is wanting to reveal himself to you and I in a much greater and deeper way than ever before. And I know sometimes when things are not quite certain or the foundation underneath you is, man, I just don't know what's gonna happen. Sometimes trusting is a little bit crazy, but my encouragement to you is to get into his word, to read the stories about the people and the journey that God took them through. Because I'll tell you, you'll find yourself seeing that they are dealing with some of the same emotions that you are. They had a little unclarity of what was going to happen tomorrow, uncertainty of what, where God was leading them. There was sometimes broken. There was sometimes some sickness. There was famine of, they just didn't know how things were going to fit together. But as you continue reading the story, <laughs> the beautiful thing is, is that God says, I'm going to bring you back home, that I'm going to allow you to see that I'm crazy in love with you. And his whole purpose is for him to get us to turn our eyes towards him. So my encouragement is to you today is to trust Him. And if you haven't put your full trust in Him, here's the great news is today is your day. Pastor Todd at the end of the service is going to give you an opportunity to respond, to fully trust God with everything that you have. And I promise if you do that, it'll be the greatest decision of your life. So this morning, New Life, Pastor Todd's got a great message for us. But before we do that, we're going to pray for it. And we're going to ask you, so in your living room or wherever you're at with your family, get them close to you right now. Maybe give them a big old hug or grab their hands. Get them close. We're about ready to pray. And if you're alone, hey, just remember the day, someday soon, where we're all sitting here together, side by side. We can give each other a hug, hold each other's hand. We're in this together. Would you pray for with me today? Jesus, we love you. We just thank you, God, for this moment, the opportunity to worship you. And now, the beautiful thing is, God, we get to hear what you want to tell us. So, God, this morning, my prayer for all of us is that, God, you give us ears to hear. Give us a mind and a heart to comprehend what you want to say. And then finally, the most important thing, give us the obedience and the courage to respond. God, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, what you're doing in our families. We put our trust in you today. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on. Everybody say it real loud wherever you're at. Come on, everything. Amen. Yes. So good to be with you today. Thank you for choosing to be with us here at New Life. We love you. We just want to let you know that even though we got this social distancing going, thing going on, that we really, really want to connect with you. And so there's a couple ways you can do that. Is you can go online to nlckc.com. It'll be splashed right there at the bottom. You can go online and click this button that says Church Online. It shows you how to get in contact with us. It shows you all the different things we have going on through the week. We're continuing with our online life groups. So there's a lot of good stuff there. Or if you've got your mobile device, go into your app store and you can type in NLC OG. And you'll see that down there as well. Download our app. And once again, it gives you all that great information Two, what's cool is that we allow you to, to get engaged. If you got a prayer request, you can click on that. If you just want to know more about new life, or today, just once again, Pastor Todd's going to say, I raised my hand. God's challenged you. You want to do something different. You want to tell us about it. So get engaged today. And finally, I just want to tell you, throughout this service, we'd love for you to interact with us and connect. You know, say hello to the people that are online with you. You know, if you want to say amen, if you want to do all the emojis at the end, but stay engaged. We love you guys. Thank you for being with us. Can I just tell you, welcome home. God bless you. Yes, Jesus Christ is alive. He rose from the dead and that day, that Easter Sunday morning, that first Easter, when Mary and Mary Magdalene and Salome went to the grave expecting to anoint a dead body. They saw the angel sitting there and they said, where is Jesus? The angel said, he is not here, he is risen. I submit to you tonight that that's the greatest news the world has ever heard. He is not here. He has conquered the grave. 
He's alive! And ladies and gentlemen, I believe that there's more proof that Jesus Christ rose from the dead than almost any other fact in Roman history. I don't believe there's a fact in ancient history today so well proven as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But even if there was no proof, no historical proof, no scientific proof, and there is, I would still believe it because I believe this book is God's inspired word and the whole early church went up and down the country preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was the thing that shook the Roman Empire that a man had risen from the dead, that he was alive, that death could not hold him. Christ is alive. He's a living Savior. Well, once again, good morning and welcome to New Life Online. This is week 97 of us doing this. And I, don't, I think it's four we were trying to figure out, but it's been an amazing journey. What an interesting roller coaster. I mean, we've learned so much. The team has worked so hard. And wasn't that an amazing time of worship this morning? See, it's those seasons in these seasons like this where we need to um, use all the tools and the resources that God has placed in our life. When we go into time of worship, like what we did this morning or what we do live on Wednesday nights, man, press into your faith. Allow God to speak to you through those moments. It's such a beautiful thing. But you know, in this sanctuary today, there's just a few of us, and I look over, and uh, you have to, I have to call someone up this morning. So my family is here with me, Tiffany and the kids, and I look over, and I, I, if I don't acknowledge this, and you get to see what I see, come here, Ethan, come here. Here is my six-year-old son, Ethan, right, kindergartner, come on, sitting out there, and I look over, and this is what he's wearing while I am doing this today. So can you wait? wave at everybody. Can you take him off? Take your mask off. Let him see your face. All right, this is Ethan. So it's hard to stay focused when you got one of the, this is probably, are you Raphael this morning? Donatello? Leonardo? You don't know, do you? All right, wave everybody. Tell them good morning. Good morning. All right, jump down. You go sit down. <laughs> Family. Yeah, there's nothing like it. But we are excited to worship with you today to just share a short message I promise today will be short. But before we go into that, let me encourage you, share this. Like when it's over, share the service. You, you don't know, there are people literally, we are getting emails and seeing responses from people. This is not an exaggeration. I'm not one of those pastors. All around the world are connecting with our services on the weekend. So share, you never know who needs to see this, like it. Hey, comment. Hey, if something, if you hear something good today, now, unless you got to like run up, you're watching this on the big screen, but if you have your, on your phone or your tablet, type amen or that was good. It does encourage me when all this is over to let, to let me know that you're connecting with this. But also, how awesome is it that we still have the opportunity to be faithful in our giving? What an awesome promise that God gives us that tests him in the area of giving. So be faithful in your tithe, faithful in your offerings. A lot of you got that stimulus check this week. God is good. So hey, be faithful in that. Whatever God lays on your heart, we believe in the tithe, but hey, you do what God lays on your heart. You can do that right below this after the service is over. You're gonna see a link to give. Go on there. And if you wanna do something spectacular, set it up to be, to be reoccurring giving. That means you don't even have to think about it. Like, it just comes right out. You don't have to just worry about it. It's done. And that way, that lets us plan ahead for how we can help our community and serve the people around us. And don't forget to go on our website, nlckc.com. I know Pastor Gary just said that. Go on the app. We're trying to get our apps to 1,000 downloads. We're really close, like really close. If a few of you watching this today would do that, we would go over 1,000. That doesn't really mean anything. But for us, it's kind of a cool thing to know you are connecting. Don't forget every day, at 10, we do a devotional. At 6, we do prayer. Awesome stuff. So, hey, last week we celebrated Easter. What an amazing time we had as we talked about how awesome it is that Jesus not only went to the cross, but then he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And because of that, there's nothing you're facing right now that God can't act on your behalf. So just let your faith arise this morning. 
Allow God to speak to you. The weather is getting ready to be a little nicer. It's going to be nice today. All week, I could kind of feel a shifting in my spirit. I feel like God is getting ready to reveal himself in such a powerful way in our lives if we will just be open to what he is doing. So let's start off with the word of prayer this morning, and let's jump right into the message. God, we love you. We're thankful for this opportunity we have today. And God, would you move on our behalf? God, would you speak to our hearts? Would you let us encounter you in such a miraculous way today? God, let our hearts be ready for you to move. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you have your Bible today, go ahead and get that out. Like your Bible. Come on, you could do that. Or if you have a tablet, or if you're watching this on your phone, find a way. But hey, let's, let's get our Bibles out. This is a, something I'm excited to do. This is going to be kind of short, but it's going to be very simple this morning. Like, I just feel like God let in my heart keep this simple. I, Jesus did something amazing, right? He literally conquered death, and we still celebrate that today. But when his ministry started, Jesus is going to begin to call his disciples, he called them with an invitation. So the beginning was an invitation, and then the end of his time on the earth was more of a commissioning. Watch how they go together. Jesus in Mark chapter 1 is starting his ministry, and, and here's what it says in verse 16. is Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son, uh, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Like, these weren't just weekend recreational fishermen. I love to fish. I am worse at fishing than almost anything else in my entire life. I've said it before, we have like a small bass boat. Jackson and me take out as much as we can. And uh, I'm really bad at it. It's nothing for him to catch fish all day and for me to catch. I mean, I've caught Coke cans, limbs, trash, turtles. I, I, I mean, I'm talking half a tree before in a lake, a beaver lake in Arkansas. It was spectacular to be so bad at something that you love so much. But these were not just like weekend guys that go to a local pond. This is what they did for a living. Fishing was in their DNA. It is all they had ever known. It's amazing to me that when Jesus speaks to us many times, he speaks in terms of ways that we can understand. I love that about God. His Spirit speaks to us so that we can clearly identify it is the voice of God. Now, for many of you, you might think, well, I don't, I don't know that I really ever hear the voice of God. I think you do. I think he speaks to you through things that you are familiar with. He speaks to you through people. He's always speaking through his word. He finds ways to connect with you, but we have to be willing to tune out the other voices to truly hear the voice of God. But the disciples, the apostles had an advantage. They literally had Jesus himself speaking to them. Again, experienced fishermen. He called them. Here's what I want you to do. No longer are you going to fish for fish, but I want to make you fish for people. Now, in Luke chapter 5, here's another calling. Now watch this, how, how this even takes a different twist. One day Jesus was standing by the lake, Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 1. He was standing by the lake and the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, Simon Peter. And he asked him to put out a little from shore. And then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put it out into deep water and let, the net, let down the nets for a catch. And you got to understand, Simon had done this his whole life. Peter was an experienced fisherman. This is what he had done since he was a small child. They had been doing this all night. He probably looked at, you know, Jesus like, are you serious? Aren't you a carpenter? I don't even know who you are. They had, they had begun to realize he'd already been called by Jesus. They knew who he was, but you can almost hear in his response, like, 
Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But hey, if you say so, I will let down the nets. And then we had done, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, listen to this. Do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. Fishing in the first century was hard work. It wasn't about just picking the right rod, picking the right bait. It was, a, it was literally casting a net and by hand, bringing it back slowly. You see, if we're going to be people that reach people, we have to be willing to put in the work that it takes to truly reach people for Jesus. It's not an overnight thing. It's not just a, hey, will you go to church with me? Although that is a way to reach people, but it's doing life with people. It is hard work. He, he was using an analogy to let them know that, listen, if you'll follow me, this isn't going to be the easiest thing you've ever done. But I'm going to allow you to reach people. Another thing he asked Peter was this. I need you to go against your instinct. Watch. Now here. Our instinct is not to always follow the ways of Jesus. I promise you that. Our instinct isn't to just always reach out to people. Man, I have days where the last thing I want to do, I'll just be brutally honest, is represent Jesus well. I'm all up in my fields. Things aren't going so good. I'm stuck in my house. I'm quarantined. At least I'm stuck with good people. But it doesn't matter. There are, even in this season, there are moments where I've literally said to God, hey, like, what are you trying to do? I mean, you've proven your point. We get it. We return back to you. But many times, God is going to ask things of you that goes against your instincts. Peter said, listen, we've done it all night. We've done this our whole lives. We aren't going to catch any fish. It's not going to happen. But he said, because you say so, I'm willing to do it. The same calling that Jesus placed on his disciples to reach people is the same calling that Jesus is calling you today. You can raise your hands and say it's awesome that he has risen, but what does that mean to the people around you? Do you live a lifestyle that says that you still believe Jesus is alive and he is active and he is moving? Or do you live a lifestyle like I do many times that is sometimes full of just selfishness and take care of me? You see, you can't be fishers of men and lover of self in the same life. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work like that. You're going to have to push away your instincts and lean in to your faith. Lean in with an obedient heart and saying, God, if you are calling me to put my net out, I'm willing to do it. You see, through this time, things are, have a change. And I think people are longing for relationship like never before. People right now in this season are longing for people that will reach out to them and just do life with them. What an opportunity. Like never before, we have the opportunity to show people the love of Jesus like never before. But you're going to have to go against your instinct of selfishness and fear in this season and walk in trust. Are you going to do it? If he asks you to do things a little different than what you feel, are you willing to trust him? That's what he was asking Simon Peter. Listen, are you going to trust me? You see, here's why it's so hard. Truly loving and reaching people is hard work. Many times there's a lot of work for little result. Serving people is not easy. Loving people is not easy. Because you know why? Because sometimes I'm unlovable and sometimes I have that feeling towards other people. It's hard work. But Jesus showed us here in Luke, the answer is just obedience. The results are not up to us. 
If people come to surrender their lives to Jesus, I'm not in the business of saving. I'm in the business of loving. I can't save anyone. I would love to. I would love to say, hey, let me, just let me pray with you and your life will change forever. But it has to be a response on the other end. But it doesn't change what God's asked me to do. And it doesn't change what Jesus is asking of you today. What did he show us? The answer is obedience. Obedience. I can't say it enough. The answer is obedience. What he's asking, what he asked of the first century apostles is no different than what he's asking of us today. You see, when we when we love the way that Jesus loved and we serve the way that Jesus served, it will change us. It might not change everybody around us in the beginning, but when we love what Jesus loved and we serve like Jesus served, remember Jesus is about to die on the cross and he's sitting with his disciples. And in Matthew 20, they have this encounter that obviously changed the disciples' lives forever. And every time I read it, it changes mine. Jesus was serving them and he told them he wanted to wash their feet. And at this point, Simon Peter's like, you'll never wash my feet. Never, never. It's my job to serve you. And Jesus rebukes him. And eventually they let him wash his feet. And Jesus says something so poignant when he tells them the Son of Man did not come to, to, to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. How are you loving people? How are you serving people? How are you spreading the love of Jesus in this time? Jesus is about to go now, right? He, he is. For 40 days, he had showed himself to, to, to four or 500 people. He's risen and he's sharing with them and his, his time is almost up. And in Matthew 28, he goes from where in, in the beginning, he shared with them a calling, an invitation, and now he's gonna give them the commissioning. You've watched, you've done it. Now it's time for you to truly walk in the fullness of what I've called you to do. And we know it as the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Remember, he's about to ascend, he's about to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted, which he died right? He rose and still some of them are like, I'm not so sure about this guy. So don't tell me that we still can't doubt God. We, we have to, to, to feed our faith all the time. But some of them still doubted. That's a scripture that blows my mind. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He told them, listen, go, like it's time. You've seen. I think far too many followers of Jesus have been sitting around and watching when our command is to go. We aren't called to be spiritual gluttons where it's feed me, feed me. Our job should be how can I serve other people? How can I help other people get fed the same way I'm being fed? Making disciples is more than just sitting by someone in church. It is literally engaging in life with people. Is it easy? Absolutely not. But it's worth it. You know why it's worth it? You know the only way we can do this? Because in verse 20, he says, and surely I am with you always. How can he be with us always? Well, come back next week. Because the beautiful thing is he told them to go in Jerusalem and wait where he would send them the Holy Spirit. Next week, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And when the fullness of the Holy Spirit ascended upon the earth, descended upon the earth, nothing would ever be the same again. Everything would change. But the calling to us is the same. He is with us. He is with us. Thursday in the morning devotional, Danny, Marie, and Lily were talking about worship. And I love what Marie said where she said this, he is with you no matter the season. Ecclesiastes chapter three talks about the different seasons we will face. And I love that idea that no matter what the season is, he is with you. 
And because he is with you, if he's called you, he will equip you. So today I want you to just lean into your faith. Ask yourself tough questions like this. What am I doing with what Jesus has done in my life? How am I responding to the people around me? You see, no matter what we are going through, the God-given mandate to make disciples has never changed. And making disciples is hard. But man, the people around you are worth it. The people you work with are worth it. The people that are in your phone, in your contacts, you barely reach out, barely reach out to are worth it. Use the resources right now God has placed in your life. One of the things I'm excited about that we're talking about as a, as a staff, and Mindy came up with, us, with this idea of just, the, 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 the thing we're working over is like, how can we connect people better? And I want you to begin to do this as we talk about this. You're gonna be hearing this a lot, like we connect. I want you to begin to pray for people in your life right now that God is gonna place on your heart that you're gonna to commit to doing life with. Maybe it's someone in the church. Maybe it's a neighbor, a coworker. If we're gonna reach people for Jesus, if we're gonna represent him well, we need to be led by the spirit. We are spirit filled and spirit led people. As you begin to walk in obedience, who is it that God is laying in your life and on your heart right now? So when we're done with this, I want you to do something. I want you to begin to pray and to pray that God will lay people on your heart. And I want you to begin to reach out to them. Hey, let's not just make it through this pandemic. Let's come out stronger. Let's love people stronger. Let's experience the love of Jesus more and let's share the love of Jesus more. You can do it because when he calls you, he also equips you. But you're gonna have to, to put away the doubt. You're gonna have to put away the fear. You're gonna have to put on the full armor of God and you're gonna be, have to begin to engage the enemy in the lives of other people, to do life with them, to pray with them, to share with them, to disciple them, to be vulnerable with them. You can do it. God is calling you today. If you're watching me on a TV, on a tablet, whatever, on a computer, you're watching this for a reason, and God is calling you to go deeper in your faith. Why do you go deeper in your faith? Not just so that you can learn more about him, although that is really important, so that you can share more deeply life with people around you. God doesn't call you to grow your kingdom. He calls us to grow his kingdom. If you're watching this today and maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus, maybe you've never fully surrendered your heart to him, guess what? Today, everything can change for you. I'm going to pray in just a minute, and I want you to allow your faith to rise. And maybe you're like, man, I feel something right now. That's the spirit of the presence of God. And the Bible says that he draws people to him, and he's drawing you to him. Maybe you need to rededicate your life back to him. Maybe if you're honest, you're living a life of selfishness right now. You're so consumed with your fear that you can't even see the needs of others around you. And maybe this morning, God is going to begin to show you the people around you that need to experience his love. So we're going to say a prayer. If you need to rededicate your life, if you need to surrender your life for the first time, or you need your faith to just rise up so that you can represent him more, let's pray together. God, we love you. We're so thankful for this opportunity we've had today. God, and just like you called the first century apostles to be fishers of people, you still call us today. And that mandate is to go into all the world. God, I know there are missionaries that have been watching this. I pray for our missionaries that are watching in places like Cambodia and Thailand and India. I know they're out there watching. I know there are people that need to experience your love. Will you give them strength? Will you give them wisdom? And God, for the ones that are watching today from our community, will you let them know how much you care for them? And God, if we would just ask for forgiveness and repent. Repentance is more than a prayer. It's a change in our life. So we surrender our lives to you this morning. We believe that the same Jesus that rose on Easter is still alive today. And because of that, we can experience the fullness of his love. Thank you for all that you've done. Give us strength and let our faith arise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, if you prayed with us today to rededicate your life to Jesus, maybe to surrender your heart to him, will you go on our website, nlckc.com, or go to our, our, uh, our app, uh, New Life, that's an old grove. It's easy to find in the app store. 
And will you just let us know there's a link on there that says, I raise my hand. Will you just explain to us what God did in your life today? Let us connect with you. Maybe you need us to pray for something. There's a prayer request button on there or you need prayer. Just put on there, we'll pray for you as a staff. We'll pray for you in our six o'clock prayer time. But hey, connect with us this week. You are absolutely awesome. We're gonna be back together soon. I feel it, I can't wait. But in the meantime, this is no time to stop. We are gonna continue to advance with the kingdom of God. You are awesome, be blessed, enjoy the nice weather, go make memories with your family. You're awesome, have a great day. Wow, what a powerful time of worship and message of hope. We're so glad you joined us today. We would love for you to check out the great content we are putting out during the week. We have everything from daily devos and prayer to kids and youth content. You can find all of the information on our website, nlckc.com slash church online. Be sure you've downloaded our mobile app and like us on Facebook and Instagram. We are praying that the message you just heard spoke something powerful to you today. Our hope is that you feel the love of Jesus deeper today than yesterday. Have a fantastic week.